We live in a place that looks like this, like this, suburbs, like this, tree-lined roads, like this. Everywhere in the world, people separated by poverty, by wealth. In South Africa, also separated by history. Most of us still separated by geography. Remember this bin, I'm coming back. I dream of the neglected, impossible spaces. Hillbrow, the most densely populated place in the whole of Africa. We ask permission from the authorities to change our city's skyline so that it looks like a future to look forward to. Usually, in response to these proposals, they say, sorry, do you, do what, do, do you want it? Or, please, will you fill in this, this form? <laughs> or, please give us three years of audited financial statements. A lot of the time, they talk, Ish, there's a recession, huh? <laughs> well, the recession, it drives by. <laughs> Sometimes they actually do say yes to us. They say yes a month before the Soccer World Cup when they're in a big hurry and we have to make everything look like we're always cooking here. Yeah. Then we do beautiful work. Here's Mary Sabande, Joburg-based artist's beautiful exhibition, Long Live the Dead Queen, on 10,000 square meters of outdoor advertising space that is normally reserved for alcohol advertising. I kid you not. Straight on, from the, straight on from the Merva's beautiful land art project at the Galulis Interchange welcomed thousands of people to Johannesburg. Sometimes they don't say yes, we get up to mischief. This is a project called the Tree Tribunal in which I collaborated with my friend, my neighbor, Philippa Yardavillas, who's a brilliant poet, and I. We wrote this statement in support of freedom of expression in South Africa. It said things like, People are not cars. They can't be herded, not unless there's a sale on. <sighs> Needless to say, it blew away in the wind three hours after we put it up. Some dreams are like that. I believe, I really believe, in the power of imagination to change our atmosphere. I believe in the power of action to make people who feel powerless all over the world, increasing numbers of us, feel a sense of power. I believe that public space belongs to the public. Yeah. Ish, but the public, the public, they drive past, they drive past. Rat-infested rubble, children coming too big at your window. What do you drive past that you think is normal? It's not normal. I drove past this pile of rubble every single day for over a year, taking my child to school, because it's in this park, which is next to the main road going into Joburg, a big park where there's lots of homeless people that live here. And I never, ever saw this until one day I noticed it. I saw this pile of rubble. That was the beginning of neighborhood target practice. I immediately just became initiative. I acted. I phoned my friend who's also an artist. His name is Johannes Dreyer. He's here. He's got these luminous eyes. And I said to him, would you like to reinvent this? And I had this bit of money burning a hole in my pocket that I got from the aforementioned 24-hour emergency public art services for the World Cup. <laughs> and so he said, yes. And I said, well, what do you want to do? And he said, I want to make a concrete bed, a double bed in the park with creases, with a duvet, with pebbles in the park, and he brought me this amazing drawing. <laughs> and I said yes. Nobody in their right minds would have said yes, would have said yes. 
I said, yes, why? <laughs> Not in my right mind. Huh? <laughs> so we didn't ask anybody because we knew if we asked the authorities, Osh, we're going to get a pile of forms. So the only thing we did was we knew we couldn't actually do it on our, on our own. So we asked Damien, the guy on the right, um, for you. He's a brilliant, brilliant technical concrete form worker, and we knew he'd be able to help us. So we got on with it. And here's Johannes with Charles, who was not long ago um, nearly deported to Lindela because she's from the DRC, but that's, you know, what happens in a lot of our countries. And we started to play, and we found this beautiful plush padded headboard in Germiston, a neighboring suburb, for 450 rand, and we used my old duvet. And then all the neighbors started to help, and they came with suggestions. And they gave us water, and they gave us power, and I started to blog about the project, and people started sending messages from all over the world. So the Troival bedtime story was happening on the corner of Besedenhout and Fulion Street in Joburg, but it was also happening online. There was a community, a neighborhood, and another community of kindred spirits. <laughs> and then things went wrong. The waste mold was in danger of cracking. We got this absolutely charming message just after we'd plastered the base from these twerps. And we had a little discussion with them, actually Johannes did, in the morning, and now they've committed to doing yoga in the Troival Park. <laughs> but it was difficult. We had lots of problems. We had so many problems. We got broken hearts, things went pear-shaped, the waste mold was a problem. One night we were so lonely, we all ate cookies, we had tea. Nobody shouted because it was raining and we were missing the deadline. We worked hard. We started getting weird messages. We started getting beautiful, romantic messages. The bed started to come alive. I started, I couldn't resist it. I, I took my clothes off and I read a book in it. And we started to blog about it. And then we had a pajama party to celebrate and we asked the city authorities, please come. Please come to our pajama party, and after this, you must come to the bed. Please come to our pajama party, but the city authority said, no, he's sorry, he couldn't because he doesn't have pajamas. But the truth is that that would have been appropriate in our neighborhood. Many people have come. Many people come all the time. They come and have their pictures taken at the bed. We know all the children. The children know what best to do with a bed on Sunday morning. The project is about romance. It's about innocence. It's about whatever you want it to be about. That's the seam that our housekeeper Martha sewed in my duvet when it was broken, now it's in concrete. Beautiful people come. They leave messages when times are important. The most important dog in the suburb came. That's Papala. She's a Tibetan singing dog. Again, for freedom of expression, we covered the bed in black cloth. Speaking of which, back to the bin. It took about four months to make the bed. It took a day. Nobody in the preceding argument bothered to clean the dustbin. What are you driving past? What are you not noticing? At the entrance to the Miyagi Center, we came here doing a Reiki saying, where are we going? We found this. I'm taking photographs of it. I hear out of the corner of my ear, <laughs> a voice saying, I need a job. And I'm thinking, yes, you know about it. I also need a job, okay? And then I turn, and there's this man. Turns out his name is Major. He needs a job. Neighborhood target practice just took off right here on the corner in Imputi Street. A whole bunch of volunteers have made a beautiful entrance, and they're still busy with it with found objects and some plants from our gardens. You see the guy in the middle, the one who's looking like he's not sure? That's Major, and he's here. And the whole Mputi neighborhood collective got into this room today. So I say to you guys, we're doing that small job so that we can do this big job one day. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.